Hi, welcome to the ECAM channel. This is Yuan. Since last time we interviewed Professor Gogozi, we received a lot of positive feedback. Thank you for your support. In this video, Professor Gogozi will talk about his advice for postdoc on how to prepare themselves to be independent PI. Let's listen to his advice. A lot of people, if they want to stay in academia, for example, a postdoc, if they want to continue their work or want to prepare themselves to be an independent PI in the future, they will be curious. Um, so here is a question. How do you balance the demands of research, teaching, and administrative responsibilities as a faculty member? Uh, what do you use some uh, like strategies to employ to stay motivated and maintain a productive mm -hmm. research output in the face of challenge or mm -hmm. setbacks? Well, uh, uh, let me uh, send you back uh, to the first question and first task that I gave you here. Select the job, the field you like. And if you do what you like, the issue of uh, work-life balance won't exist for you. Because oh, that's true. Uh, if your job is your hobby, you know, like a... I enjoy uh, editing your manuscript, playing on the beach, because I love it. I love doing research. I love writing papers. I love learning about something new. So I think this is an artificial question emerged from the fact that many people go to do something they don't like, don't care about. There are many people in academia who are in a wrong place. They went there for whatever reason. And they really don't belong there. They don't love to teach. They don't love to do research. They just want to get money, spend minimal amount of time. And this is where, in my opinion, all these talks are about. So I think one issue is solved very easily. If you do what you like, you do it in academia, at least in research. Uh, as much as you like it and want it here. And you may need a break. Some need short break. Some need longer break to recharge, recuperate here. You just balance it here. Now, research, teaching, administration. I've done it all. I think I can do it all. There are things I like better than others. And I would put it exactly in this sequence. I love research. I don't think anything can replace feeling of discovery. I like teaching. Otherwise, I would not be mm -hmm. in academia. Yes. I would go and do research uh, elsewhere. But what I like to teach courses that I can uniquely teach. Mm. I can uniquely share with students information about Maxine's. We discovered these materials. I believe I know more than most people in the world about the topic. And I think this is what I can teach. I can teach students how to write papers, how to do research. With my experience, I definitely have more than average experience in this. Mm -hmm. After publishing hundreds of papers, after serving as editor for many, many years here. Mm -hmm. And I don't like necessarily teach a course that I know there are hundreds of people around who can teach just like me. Or maybe a number of people who can teach it better than me. What is the point? I need to do things that no one else can do, or very few people in the world can do, and no one in my university can do. And administration is a burden. There are people who are natural administrators, leaders, who are very good at this. And they do it. And I served as an associate dean for a while, I definitely have administrative tasks and duties as director of uh, the Edge Drexel Nanomaterials Institute. I serve on many committees and boards. It's a part of it here. This is something we give back to the community. This is something is needed to uh, perform. However, whenever I get uh, invitation to apply for dean position or VP for research uh, provost position at the universities, I say thank you no, 
because I'm less interested, I'm interested in my research career. So again, I just follow my heart, I do things that I love to do. And someone else, maybe a super successful administrator, I had a colleague at Drexel, Professor Munchoy, who is the president of uh, entire University of Missouri system. Now we started with him together at University of Illinois, Chicago, moved to Drexel uh, on the same day, and I selected research career. He selected administrative career. He is great in what he is doing. I'm okay in what I do, but what is the most important, I enjoy doing it here. And I think that's, uh, again, followed the same scheme. He was, he loved lead, loved being an administrator, and he is uh, great and successful in what he has been doing. He is university president now. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is great. Yeah, seems like the path. And I don't have good strategies to share with you about uh, how to stay motivated. I stay motivated simply because I <laughs> like you what like I it. do. I don't need extra motivation uh, for this here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And first, yeah. Um, setbacks happen. You know, like uh, you fail more frequently than you succeed doing research. It's normal. It's a part of life. You just uh, move on and uh, try next idea, write the next paper if your work got rejected or next proposal. Yes. yes. That's life. Just keep keep trying, never um, give up. <laughs> don't yeah. expect, right, never, never give up. Yes. Uh, don't expect that everything you do is going to be successful. It won't. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah, true. That, what experience would you like to share with uh, young scientists to help them transition from, let's say, postdoc to an independent uh, researcher? My key uh, suggestion is here. Acquire skills while you're a postdoc that you will need an independent researcher. First, in general, if you go for a postdoc, it primarily makes sense if you want to go to academia. So, assuming you're a postdoc with ambitions to become a professor, you should try to do things that professors do. It's again writing even more papers. It's helping your professor and volunteering yourself to review papers, write proposals, help your advisor, write, edit proposals that you see how it is done, how proposals are written. Learn how to mentor. Mentor undergraduate students, graduate students, uh, that's very important. You will mentor your own students uh, sooner or later, or employees if you don't end up in academia. Learn how to teach. Try it again as a TA and substitute instructor in a class when your professor travels or is sick, things here. And there are two things that are going to happen. First, you learn all the skills that you need as a faculty member. And then everything will be routine for you. You become independent uh, PI uh, faculty somewhere. You have done it. You know how to do it all. But also, you may find that it's not yours. If you really suffer teaching and explaining things, if you feel that uh, you would do anything, uh, clean uh, toilets instead of writing a proposal or other things here, then maybe that's not yours. Maybe just you simply, you test it yourself in this environment. And this is not necessarily what you like. You need to select a different career. You like research, but you're not necessarily into teaching. There are national laboratories. Uh, there are R&D divisions of companies. You may better fit there with your skills. So I think that's also uh, is very, very important because you want to move to academia prepared. And then, again, if you like it and if you know how to do everything, there is no way you're going to fail. I hope you enjoyed the video today. In the next video, Professor Gogossi will talk about his opinions on publications, like what to consider when selecting a journal, and how to respond to the reviewer's comments. We maintain this channel only on the weekends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. The videos in our ECAM channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, like, and share our videos to support our channel.
Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.